Once upon a time, on a July 15 of 1970 something, because I don't want her to, <laughs> to cast a spell on me. I shall destroy your happiness. 70 something is perfect. <laughs> you have no idea what I'm capable of. You were born in New York and one of your parents was Puerto Rican. So you're Latina and not a lot of people know that. How do you feel as what Latinos are achieving right now in, in this industry? I love seeing working Latinos in the industry. We're a beautiful culture. I have never had so much support from a community. I feel like like there's all this Latin power all the time and we all have each other's backs. You do speak very little Spanish, however, you were poquito, telling me. Un pero no bien. <laughs> Entiendo, pero... You studied Spanish in, in Spain and, and then what happened? I was tired of being Latina and not speaking my, my language. And I didn't learn growing up. My, my parents separated and then my father passed away when I was young and he was Puerto Rican, so I never learned. I, at 29, decided that I was gonna move to Spain and I went there for six months and I studied five days a week and I was really, really good. Time to swim back home, little mermaid. How difficult is to portray uh, such a cliche evil queen from, from a very old tale. The writers are incredible. So starting off as this evil character, really it, be able to sink my teeth in that and, and understand where she was coming from, because she can't just be evil for the sake of being evil. Would you like something to drink? Do I look like I need a drink? We cannot defeat them. Do not tell me what we can or can't do. I made you sheriff, and I can take it away just as easily. You know, a, a girl who was betrayed by a parent who she loved and a love that she had lost. The author of the book is not really a person. It's you. It's almost like you're playing God, you exactly. know? And it's like, Again, to have that much power is dangerous. I think the message is you are in control of your own destiny. You believe in that? I'm not a manipulative person, so <laughs> I, I believe in that things come your way when they're meant to. I read that you're very close with the actor that plays Henry, My your son. second son. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I met him very, very early on. He was testing for the role and I was testing for Evil Queen and I saw him and I looked at him and I went, you're gonna play my son. And I hadn't even gotten the part yet. And he hadn't gotten the part yet, but I just felt that he was gonna play my son. I love you, Henry, more than anything. I see you have a tattoo. This is a feather that has been my symbol since I was uh, 23 years old. It came to me in a moment where I was questioning a lot of things. It was a trying time in my life. It's also a symbol of hope for me. It's actually become a very popular symbol for all my fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have also a scar in your lip. I was 10 and I was with playing with my cat and we were attacked by a dog. Oh. So I want to make up a really cool story and be like, I was kidnapped and taken to Cuba. <laughs> <laughs> and like, and they sliced my face, but that's but not no, true. It was the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Lana, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. We love the show, and we hope you have a great career, and, and that we get to see you in movies. I hope so. That's that's my goal. Gracias por todo.